For years, C++ was missing a built-in mechanism for constraining template arguments. There exists some workarounds for this problem, but fortunately, C++ 20 now makes this a lot easier. Let me show you how. Let's start with a simple example. We have a type widget, which is neither copy nor move constructible. And here is a function template foo, which takes some type t. Right now, our function simply takes an instance of our widget. Now, let's add some code here. Let's try to insert our argument into a vector. And when we try to compile it, it fails. And it fails since such type cannot be emplaced into a vector. Instead of an explicit error, we get this whole wall of text here. C++ veterans know how to parse all of this, but it would be great to have a way to express this requirement directly, just like Rust does with traits. Traditionally, such constraints were created using template tricks, which some consider an unholy creation of pure chaos, to be honest. For example, let's use the good old substitution failure is not an error method to restrict what we can pass to foo. We use std enable if t and here std is move constructible v and all of this of t. We already can see the message is much better here, but it's still not that great. The function is no longer available to non-movable types, but there's no real explanation why. Now let's try to do something better with a static assert. So let's get back to a simple void here and add a simple static assert. Ah, we're getting somewhere. But still, this is not a real solution. Assets are post factum checks, not actual constraints. They're not visible in the interface at all. Also, it might be hard to combine different requirements and reuse them with just asserts. Now, C20 fixes all of this with concepts. A concept is a named set of requirements which you can apply to template parameters. Let's create a concept for our foo function. First, let's remove this static assert. We won't need it anymore. And to make a concept, we start at listing template parameters which we would like to constrain. So, we write template plus t because we will work on some type t. Then we add a concept keyword followed by a name. Let's simply name this move constructible. Then we need to list our requirements which should end up with a boolean true or false, indicating if our template parameter t here meets all of them. We can do this using our standard library helper. So our move constructible concept will simply equal std is move constructible v of t. This is a very basic concept which we can now apply to our template parameter foo. The simplest way to do this is simply take the name of our new concept and paste it instead of the class keyword here. Now take a look at the error message, especially here. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost as good as Rust error messages, all thanks to our one little concept. But what if you want to combine multiple constraints? Hmm? We can use the requires clause, which can combine them using a familiar Boolean syntax. First, let's create a dummy concept to show all of this. We create a new concept again for some type t concept. We name this, I don't know, concept, because why not? And it will simply equal true, because again, why not? So how to require our t here to satisfy both move constructible and our dummy foocept? Well, let's get back to the class keyword and add a requires clause. So we write requires and then we simply specify what is required. We required our t to be move constructible 
and we require also a full set to be satisfied. And again, you can see the beautiful message that the constraint is not satisfied. If you want, we can also move the requires clause after the function signature. So from here, simply to here. Now requires is actually quite powerful. It can be used to specify whole expressions for concepts which need to be valid. The result of such requires expression is either true or false, depending on the validity of the expression itself. Let's write our move constructible concept to see that in action. So we delete our helper invocation here and we use our requires expression. So we first write requires, then let's pretend our requires is a function and we list it parameters. So here we take a parameter of type t, which is the one we are constraining, and it will be named as a pseudo variable lower t. And now we simply, in braces, specify an expression which needs to be valid for a concept to be true. So in our case, we know our t needs to be move constructible, which needs constructing t from std move of our pseudo variable needs to be valid. This whole expression here is true only if type t can be move constructed from some other t. And we can see the error message is back, constraint not satisfied. Quite cool, right? Ha, but that's not all. Requires can also check for existence of actual types. We can use that to create a more convoluted move constructible check, because why not? So let's remove that here and add braces here. So now we simply need to list all of the types which need to exist for this concept to be true. So we start with type name, std enable if t from std is move construct t. And that's it. Requires here returns true if std enable t exists. So it's our substitution failure is not an error trick again, but expressed as a simple concept. But wait, there's more. You can combine those two types of requirements, this one and the previous one, and require both a valid expression and its result to satisfy type requirements. We could make a really convoluted example of our move constructible here, but I think it's better to simply create a new example concept. So let's create a dummy one, which will constrain some type T concept. Maybe can add to int. We want to check if some T can be added to int. And we state that we require some imaginary variable t in our expression, which we will specify like that in braces, braces inside braces, to be valid. And its return type, well, let's say it should be the same as t. So std, same as t. Looks kind of scary, but it's simple if you grasp what it's all about. All of this means our type t needs allow adding to int, which is specified as uh, this expression here. And the resulting type of such expression should be the same as t itself. Smart, huh? Really good stuff. But there's one more thing. You can specify many checks at once. So we can, for example, Add another thing here. So t plus, I don't know, a character should also be the same as t. So now we have a very convoluted concept which requires our t to be able to be added to int and also to be able to be added to a character. And result of both expressions 
should be the same as T. Sorry for that weird example, couldn't think of a better one. But if you think that's all requires can do, you are wrong. You can also nest requires inside requires. You didn't expect that, right? So in conclusion, that was a lot of new information. Concepts are a very powerful tool of restraining some template types. Instead of relying on some convoluted template metaprogramming tricks, we can simply create a readable and explicit concepts which needs to be satisfied. Okay then, I hope I showed you what concepts are all about. Hope you found this informative, hope you found this interesting. As usual, if you have any questions, post them down below, keep subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.